We uh, have Councilman or Councilwoman uh, Carter that wanted to be called in, and so give us just a second and we will get her online. We kind of forgot to give you a call, and um, anyways, we're about halfway through. So we, you really haven't missed a whole lot of uh, discussion. So uh, the next thing on our, we'll just keep carrying on with our um, agenda. Okay. Okay, just a second. Okay, we got a motion and a second to amend the agenda, so we'll kind of go from there. Uh, the next thing is the uh, appointment of members of the pool covering committee. And uh, is there any discussion on that? And as far as that, my computer went down, so I'm kind of lost for a minute. That mayor council, a few council meetings ago, uh, you asked Mr. Calvi to chair up a committee to look at covering the pool. Uh, there are some names submitted. Jared Peterson, Kimberly Coons, Lynn Adams, and Christine Riley. So that, those names were put on a resolution that you would consider if you would consider appointing them to this committee to, to look at different options of covering the pool. Okay. <coughs> Mayor, I make the motion that we approve the committee does mention. <coughs> Okay. Appointment of the pool, covering the pool committee. All right, we have a motion. I'll second. We have a second. Is there any other discussion on that? Discussion well, <laughs> before or after, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I was just going to recommend that the, the pool covering committee spend some time with Carl T. Matt. Um, I sat down with him, and within an hour, I had all sorts of numbers and, and things that it seemed like took years to figure out. He's done a lot of research, and he's a great asset. If you haven't already reached out to him, if you have, good on you. I have those members already. Okay. Yeah, I was just making that additional comment. Uh, Don's done a good job of getting this thing together and getting going, and we'll, this will help provide some support to them to, to look into that and make a recommendation to the council. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Do we have any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Linda, was that a yay or nay from you? Yay. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear that. Okay, next thing on the agenda will be the uh, <clears throat> appointment of the planning commissioner, and that will be Brandon Rindlisbacher. And do we have a motion for any discussion? Is Brandon here? I don't think Brandon could be here. Okay. But. All right. Do we have a motion or any I, discussion? I just have a question about the process. Do we submit this to the community and take applicants, or are these people that we go after? These are appointed. I mean, well, these are appointed in a situation where this is a replacement of one commissioner, and right. so it'll, this term, his term will run until April. Yeah, it, it's not even, yeah, it's not very long, but I mean, George passed away. Right. It was George. Yeah, and then uh, and then what happens is I I go through I make the appointment with the consent of the council, and then it, and then 
during the course of the year, they'll have applicants for the open seats. And right. They put this together. And then we'll go through and we'll go through this all again. Yeah. So, having said that, Mayor, I'll make a play. I'll make a motion we appoint this commissioner. Okay. If we got a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. We will uh, go ahead and get him appointed. Next thing on the uh, agenda is the discussion regarding utility rate survey, and I'll turn that over to Sarah. Unless you're not ready and you want me to go to the next one. Yep. Okay, I will turn it out. We'll go to the Face and EIS Main Street uh, study, and I'll turn the time over to Loretta, and uh, she's kind of running the, the survey for us, so we appreciate her coming down. She spends a lot of time traveling back and forth, so. You know, if you go very long, you have to start doing a song and dance for it. Uh, careful what you tonight. Um, as you are aware, last time we were here, it was uh, back in November, and we were preparing for our open house that we held December 3rd. Um, and at that open house, we showed the public, um, displayed all the various alternatives that we've put together at this point in the project. And so overall, the purpose of tonight is to, number one, let you know what we heard from the public, from your um, constituents. Um, and also let you know kind of the next steps in the process as we move forward and whittle down the alternative. Um, real quickly, and I know that we have a couple new members of the council, and I, I know that you have heard some of this, but I, I do want to go through and just remind everyone about the timeline of the overall project that we're working on. Um, we started back in, in October and we've been working through the summer. We've come up with, you know, the problems that we want to solve. We've come up with a bunch of sol solutions to address those problems. Those are the alternatives that were presented on December 3rd. And we are at that point that right in the middle, analyze impacts. Um, the trigger that will take us into analyzing impacts, which, which then becomes a bunch of documentation on Tech, technical expertise that then gets prepared into the draft EIS is selecting and whittling down these 17 alternatives <coughs> that we have to a manageable few that then we'll do additional study on. 
Um, so you can see the big red star. That is where we are. We held a public meeting. We've gotten input from our stakeholder working group as well as the agency working group. And now we're looking at all the information in front of us. We, I mean the project team. That includes both UDOT, Payson City, Federal Highway Administration, and the technical team, staff, design engineers, planning staff, etc. cetera. Um, and so tonight's purpose, we want to know from you as a council representing Payson City, after we go through the next series of slides to know, hey, this is what we heard from the public out of the open house. Of these alternatives that have been presented to you and that were shown to the public on December 3rd, does Payson City have a preference? We're not looking for a preferred, but we are looking to whittle down these 17 alternatives that are still on the table and we would like to know what can Payson City live with, what can Payson City not live with. Ultimately, we will take that information we have a similar um, meeting next week with the regulatory agencies at our agency working group um, that we will have this same, very similar conversation. The only additional information we'll have next week is the outcome of tonight's meeting. And so and it's after that time, come mid-February, that as a project team with UDOT, Federal Highway, and Payson, that then we will come up with those um, four potentially more, a little less, alternatives that then we will package up and we will do additional study on and prepare our draft EIS. So I want to talk a little bit about what we heard and feel free to stop me at any time, otherwise I'll just go through this and we can open it up to question and answer. Um, we held the public meeting, it was very successful. Um, here at the city offices, we had about 120 attendees, um, those that signed in on the sign-in sheets. Um, we held a public comment period, and so we left public comment open for a month, from December 3rd to January 3rd. And of that, during the public open house, and afterwards online and also through the mail, we received various comments, and they came in three forms. One was polling which was a live poll that we took during the open house. The second one was um, comment forms. And so we had 48 online and written comment forms that were submitted. And then we also had a mailed in petition. And I'll talk about the results of all that. And so during the open house, we had um, a bunch of material. We had um, kind of a facilitated tables that walked through all the information that we were presenting. But at the back near where we were asking for comments and really asking preference of those in the public who attended on what they saw that night, we asked them of the three categories of alternatives, and I'll remind everyone right now about the three different categories that we do have. One is to in the combination, which you can see right there on the left. Um, that includes a combination of using a portion of the existing Main Street interchange in its current location, but also providing connection to another um, access point along 15, and then providing a new arterial that would connect down to 198. So it provides a little bit of both of the existing Main Street, it keeps it open. It also provides um, opportunity for a new access um, and interchange there. And then we have the relocate category. The relocate would say, you know what, we're going to close the Main Street interchange where it is in its current location and we're going to relocate it. And so there are two alternatives that fall under that category. And then we also have the improve category. That means, you know what, let's keep Main Street interchange where it's at um, and we're going to do what we can to configure it. Um, and, and that will be the category of alternatives that fall under that. I will note, um, because ultimately it is, a main, it is a driver to the results that you're seeing on the polling, is that with the combination and the relocate, those two categories of alternatives do not require widening of Main Street. Um, it assumes that there would need to be widening only to 600 North, but the rest of Main Street would stay free lanes. The improved category um, would 
wide Main Street to five lanes. And so that would take it all the way from I-15 up to 100 North. And, um, and that is the primary difference, at least in regards to Main Street, between those three categories. And, I, and we just need to make it clear that the state would take everything east of Main Street if on the improved and take all the houses, businesses, and everything right up to Walgreens, correct? There, pretty much every property would be affected, yes. Right now, and I will say that the, the design decision to widen only to the east was just based on a tally of properties that would be hit um, to the east, to the west, and then we went to that. Ultimately, as this project, as this, as this decision is made on what alternative is, is uh, put forward, design could then, it could, the impacts could be shifted east to west, I'll just, I'll just say that. But yes, there are a lot of impacts when you um, assume widening Main Street to five lanes. Yeah. That's what I think everybody needs to really know. Yeah. If we don't do anything, that's what's going to happen. And I, and I will say that you know all the information that was presented, all the alternatives that I'm referring to that are not presented here on the screen, they're on our website. Um, they're available to you, and so just uh, be aware that that information is out there. Although we had a comment period associated with the open house, of course, as a project team, we are open to any comments during the life of this project. Um, so let's talk about the polling results. So of those attendees that came to the open house, you can see that um, the vast majority of 78 preferred the combination of, um, category, and then you can see the relocate and improve after that. Um, so now we're talking about the results of the comment form. The comment form had a couple um, different sections. One was to gauge um, of the people who were looking at the different alternatives and ultimately looking at the um, case in the city and their community. We asked them, how important on a scale of one to seven are these three elements? One, preserving historic resources, widening Main Street, and protecting wetlands. And you can see that overarching that the um, what was most important of those 48 comment forms that were received was preserving historic resources. I will note that there are a lot of historic resources along Main Street, and that's ultimately what was guiding this question on the comment form. Um, and so then we asked also, so what alter alternative do you prefer? And you can see that um, C1, C2, and C3, those are the combination alternatives. Combination one, combination two, combination three, received the highest preference of all the comment forms that were received. Um, after that, you can see um, one of the relocates, R2, was, um, had seven, and then there were several of the improved alternatives that had three people noted that that was their preference. Um, the other thing that I said um, that at least as, as in regards to what we heard from the public after holding this public meeting, so we had the polling results with, which was live at the public meeting, we had comment forms that were submitted, there was also a mailed in petition, and so this petition um, had 421 signatures, it's my understanding that this petition was put forward by the uh, manager at the Gas and Go um, Chevron and convenience store and that it was set out and you can see this was the, the top and I've put all this text up here and I'll leave everyone a minute just to read this. Um, but this was a voluntary petition that was put out by the manager of that Gas and Go and um, ultimately received 421 signatures. In summary, this text says that of all the category of alternatives, we support the combination alternatives. And so that's, that's what I have tonight. Um, you know, there is a lot of information in the 11 by 7, 17 <coughs> map book. You've seen it before, we talked about it and have talked about it since pretty much the end of summer um, that has led us to this point right now. We've received stakeholder and public input. 
we, we can tell there's a preference from the public. Um, we have heard from our stakeholder working group a preference. And so now we need to know from Pace and City and then also from the agencies, these regulatory agencies, EPA and Army Corps, ultimately, <coughs> ultimately whatever we decide, we want to make sure we can construct it. If we need a permit, we need a permit. And it's those agencies who will who have that jurisdiction. So I'm here tonight to ask your opinion. Um, well, as far as mine, and I'll just give you my opinion, yeah. one thing I would not like to see is Main Street taking out our historical area. I mean, uh, there's a lot of those homes down that are on the National Historic Registry. Uh, and if I remember right, when I talked to the guy from Utah, they just basically said, it doesn't matter, we'll just tear them out. They have that authority. That is what I would not like to see. But to me, that would ruin face and main street. I understand it probably affects a few jobs. Um, one thing, I, I, I'm 100% for economic development, not losing jobs, but if we don't do something, our, our intersect, er, interchange down there is not working. So we got two choices. One, just let the state take care of it, and then you're gonna lose everything that we got there anyways, other than McDonald's. Or, we can go through and get what we want. So, that's my personal opinion on it. I do like the C1. I like C1, C2, or C3. Yeah. Um, not that much difference. Really. But now, I, I think, and what I would like to have is each council member uh, state what they like and don't like, or why. Um, and like I say, mine comes down to we're going to affect a few of them down by the end <coughs> but there's a lot of historical value I think that we've got further up and I think that people aren't understanding what, what the impact is if we don't do something. And that's one of the reasons that we kind of have, have got this going. And I will, and, and I appreciate, I think the format of, to hear from all the council members is, is fantastic. Um, I will say, you know, we're not looking for the preferred. That, that's not the point in the study that we're in. We are looking for a manageable few to then dive into a lot more detail on what the impacts are, more than what you see in the level one and level two screening, and those, you know, set criteria that we looked at historic, and we looked at um, right away, and we looked at wetlands. But the draft EIS will take a, a really in-depth look at these alternatives that we decide to carry forward to study in more detail. It's only until this fall when we've prepared that draft, we've gone through um, a pretty exhaustive studying of these remaining alternatives that then after a public hearing, a similar meeting will be held for the public to get um, input on these remaining alternatives. That I will come back to the council and I will ask for a formal resolution on a preferred alternative. And so tonight, it's it's really, you know, from my perspective, I think the easier the easier question may be, what can't you live with? You know, and so that's... Well, I can't live with taking out my history. I'll, I'll yeah. put mine there. Same there. Yeah. And, and like I say, either way you look at it, whether we do a combination or if we don't do anything with that exit and close it off and just move another exit, but you know, that still brings people up our main street. I think it's a vital part of what we are and who we are. And that's that's why my decision would feel that way. So we can start at Scott and, and then carry and go on around, let each yeah. one of them. Well, I'm pretty much in agreement with what the study shows. I mean, C1's probably my favorite, C2, C3. Okay, um, I have a few questions. In this process of getting it down to three or four, you have the agencies, the stakeholder, the public, and Payson City. If you're giving a percentage 
and I don't know if you can, how much weight does each one of these have? I'll tell you what has the, the, you know, overwhelming the weight are the results of level two and level one screening. The issue here is a lot of the alternatives are very comparable, um, at least in the eyes of Federal Highway and UDOT. And so, yes, there's some cost difference, but is it order of magnitude program level difference? No, not really. Are, you know, when we look at the performance, which is that level one aspect of all the different alternatives, they all do an acceptable job to meet federal highway standards. And then we start to look at impacts. And it is a balance. I mean, there, there are a lot of property, a lot of historic um, impacts, um, you know, then gauged to a little bit higher cost and potentially higher wetland impacts. And so, again, if, if there's any waiting to be had, it's on the data and the results. And so, you know, as a project team, as we look through this, that's why, that is why I'm here tonight. That's why I'm going to meet with the regulatory agencies because, you know, we need your input so that we know we're capturing the alternatives that, that we know ultimately can be implemented. Other than that, there is no other waiting scale. So. Okay. Um, a couple other questions. One is, um, if I understand the, the scope of the study is to make sure Main Street doesn't fail and that's why the alternative of leaving Main Street the way it is and adding a whole nother interchange, is that, is that why that one was dropped out? So the reason why we did have another category early on and that category was to keep existing Main Street um, but then also add another interchange, a full interchange that would be located, <coughs> located primarily a mile to the north in between Benjamin and Main Street. We looked at that. Um, when we looked at that, based on the level one screening, based on the ultimate performance of what it would do to the existing Main Street interchange, it did not improve the um, traffic operations on Main Street interchange to an acceptable level in the year 2040. And okay. that's why it was eliminated. Okay. I, I have a question on that. So I didn't get to go to this meeting. I, I encourage citizens to go out. But So let's look at C1 here. Is the only way you get on, on the freeway at this northern addition here? Or can you still get on the freeway from Main Street as well? I, I, it's like a frontage road type area. You so so you can only get on the northern one and then you drive the frontage road down to Main Street? Kind of like Spanish Fork. It is kind of like Spanish Fork. Yeah. Yep. And I think Spanish Fork. Okay. okay. So I have another question on the additional one. Is it possible to go back to the level one and look at additional access points? Because my understanding is it failed because the access points didn't didn't meet standards, but if you change the access point, can you still do the additional exit? No, the, um, there was actually another alternative that I think you're referring to, and that was to keep Main Street in its current location and configuration, and then build a half interchange. And so that half interchange is where we came into conflict to uh, Federal Highway guidance on access, and also, their, their requirements of um, access, they want to build a full interchange if they're putting that kind of money and modifying the interstate. So that was eliminated based on FHWA policy. Um, the other interchange would be placed a mile away from Main Street, which meets all design criteria when it comes to interchange um, you know, placements for a federal highway. And if we go back so, too much further, then you're in all the wetlands. And, and so access was not part of the reasoning why it was eliminated. It, it ultimately, this, this project has a simple, logical, problem-solving approach. That's, that's all this environmental study is. So we identified the problem that we're trying to solve. 